In this video, I'm going to help Winston do with his service motion. And if you don't know who Winston is, you must be living under a rock. He's got one of the best YouTube channels around. And of course, this video is courtesy of Winston Do on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to his awesome YouTube channel. I have put his link in the description below. So first, let's watch his serve, and then we'll analyze it. No. Now, Winston's a really good player, and he does not know that I'm making this analysis, so when he watches this, it'll be the first time he knows uh, that I'm even making this video. So, sorry, Winston, putting you uh, out there, but I really want to help you. I've been watching your serve for a little bit, and I thought, you know what? I need to make a video uh, to help him. So, the first thing is I want to talk to you about your toss height. Uh, there are, and really toss placement. There are two things I would recommend when it comes to your toss. I want you to toss lower and I want you to toss more to the right. And there are reasons for both. But let's talk about simply the height. So there's something I do, uh, and it's a toss timer. And so I just put the ball near the top of the head, and then I throw a timer down. And we'll still help see how long it takes for you to contact the ball from that point. What I recommend for students is that they have anywhere from 0 0.6 to 0.9 seconds as their toss timing. So, oops, didn't mean to push that. So we put the ball back at the top of the head there, put the timer down, and let's see if you're within the 0.6 to 0.9 seconds. So 0 0.65, 0 0.64 right here. This is the toss timing for JJ Wolf. And 0.68, this is for Nick Kyrgios. 0.79, that is Taylor Fritz. And we've got 0.83, that's Roger Federer's toss timing. So these are, this is how long it takes for those players to hit the ball from that point when the ball's at the top of the head. But for you, you can see that we are all the way up to 1.01 .01 seconds. So you are outside of the range that I would recommend for you. Just know that an efficient motion doesn't take very long. So you don't have the most efficient service motion. I'm going to show you that in a second here. So you actually have the toss high to accommodate for a swing that just doesn't really have a lot of racket speed or as much racket, speeds, uh, racket speed as it should have for someone your level of play. So the first thing I want you to do is actually just to simply lower your, your toss, and you do that by actually tossing slower. So you toss slower to toss lower, the ball won't go as high, you have less time, which is a good thing because then it forces efficiency and it forces racket speed. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about is at contact, this is a first serve, by the way, you, can, you, you hit it long and then you have to do a second serve here. So this is a first serve. I want you to look how far left your toss is. If we take, and I'm going to put you side by side with Kyrgios right now um, in, in a second here. If you look at your toss, and you put it all the way down, just look how far to the left that toss is. Now, before I show you why you don't want to do this and how this is actually hurting your racket speed and your swing path, let me put you side by side with Nick. Now, before we even go over his contact point, let's just look. By the way, this is a flat serve right down the tee. I mean, the ball is like rising as it hits the back fence. It's just insane how hard he is crushing that ball. But if we go to his toss timer, uh, toss timing, there's the ball near the top of the head. And we look how long it takes for him to contact the ball. There it is, 0.68 seconds, as I mentioned. And so he has a much lower toss, which means what? He's got to swing faster. That's how you build racket speed. You create the environment where racket speed is the solution to the problem, meaning toss lower, you have less time, you got to swing faster. But I want to take a line straight down from his contact. And then we did that for you. And I want you, I want you to look how close... That green, well, let me make it a, uh, a different color circle. There we go. I want you to look how the green line is very close to his left hip, where there is a lot of room between your hip and the green line. I would even say that Kyrgios could stand to toss the ball even a little bit more to the right than he currently is. But even with Kyrgios, who tends to toss pretty left, pretty far left on his flat serve, he is still tossing the ball more to the right than you have. So I would recommend lowering the toss and also tossing more right than you currently are. And here's the reason why I want you to toss more right. And this really is, in my opinion, the number one issue when it comes to your service motion. 
I want you to look at the moment where, you know, I call it knock off the birthday hat and you do a great job of it. You know, you do this beautiful uh, right to left movement. Watch how the racket goes from right to left over your head like this. This is awesome. I'm not too worried about the fact that the racket opens at this point, only because you do get the racket on its edge by the time you go up to contact, which is awesome. It's like Sampras, Shapovalov, uh, Federer, where the racket, as it pass after it passes in over the head, the racket actually opens up. But again, the racket definitely goes on edge by that point, so it's okay. But here is where things get you in trouble. Your hand, right hand, too early in the swing starts traveling up. Your opponent right here, baby Tsitsipas, I'm going to show you compared to his serve because he has a beautiful service motion and I want to see, I want you to see the difference at this critical juncture in the serve. Now, if we look at baby Tsitsipas over here and we look at his serve, he's got a beautiful motion. I know he missed that serve, but he's got a really good motion. I want you to notice that when his racket gets to hitting the birthday hat right there, that his hand continues moving backward. Watch how his right hand, Winston, keeps going back following that red arrow after he hits the birthday hat. So watch how his hand keeps going back. His right hand, and both of you, I'll put you in the same exact place right here, both of you are in a really similar place with your racket just about to hit the birthday hat. Watch how your hand just goes up. Watch your hand. It goes up to hit the ball. Watch his hand go back and then up. His hand goes back, then up. What your, And this might be a flexibility issue. I don't know. But what you're going to have to work on is this shoulder flexibility to, as the racket's passing in, I already complimented you on your ability to go from right to left, right to left in the service motion. But while you're doing that, you need your hand to be doing that too. Baby Tsitsipas does it with the hand and the racket, the hand and the racket both going back. You get your racket to make that move, but your hand is going up. Look how your hand right here starts going up. The red line should be your hand, but it stops prematurely and your hand immediately starts going up. What does this mean? It means it really limits your racket drop. And you can see you don't really have much of a racket drop. If we look at your racket drop versus his, Look how low his racket is. His racket is so much lower where your racket drop. And, and so like if you're watching this video and you're not Winston and your coach has been talking to you about your lack of racket drop, this may be the reason. It may be that your hand is going up too early in the service motion. And what does that mean? You can look at his forearm. His forearm is completely flat. And for the viewers watching this at, um, you know, not Winston, th this is Winston on this side. This is from a match when Winston was playing on his awesome channel. You can see, Winston, that your hand, your hitting hand, is always higher than your elbow. In your service motion, your hand is always higher than your elbow. You look at your opponent and, all, and you can see his elbow is higher than his hand. This is what we want. But the way to create that is when your racket is going back from right to left, you need your hand to continue doing that. That's going to get you to use the proper throwing motion during the serve, and it gets the elbow to lead toward the ball. And this video, by the way, is courtesy of Court Level Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I have also put their link in the description below. Here's Felix Aljali Asim, and look at this. We were talking about baby Sitsipas having that level arm and, and then leading with the elbow. Nobody does it better than Felix. Look how he really leads with that elbow. In the video we see with you, Winston, we just don't see your elbow ever higher than your hand. And that's because from this point right here, if we take Felix's serve, your hand goes up immediately from this point. Watch Felix. Watch how his hand goes back. See that move?
So this might be a shoulder flexibility issue. You might be struggling to get your hand to go back because you're just not flexible enough. And that's why you can see again, he's, he's got this racket drop down by his shorts. This is the key. Get your hand to keep going back and actually lead up to the ball with your elbow, not with your hand. Now, you might be wondering, why, Ryan? Why do I need to toss more right? You know, I, to I showed you that your toss could be more right compared to uh, Kyrgios. In fact, if we look at Felix here and we draw, there's contact right there, and we draw the straight line down, you can see it is not as far left as you have. Well, here's the reason why. I want you to notice the effects of having a toss too far to the left, especially with the motion that you're having. If we put you and Felix next to each other at the moment when you're about to go up to the ball, I want you to notice Felix's racket position versus yours. See how Felix has the racket flying off to the right of his hand? The racket flies off to the right when you drive the elbow properly. The racket actually goes this way. In fact, sometimes I have students on court at this moment right here, just pretend to throw their racket, but at right here, let go of the racket and the racket flies to the right. Because at this moment, the racket is flying to the right. Your racket never gets to the right of your hand. And you can see that. Your racket, especially based on like the court itself right now, your racket, if, if the camera person could move over here, or like I know you set up the camera, but if the camera were directly behind you, directly where you are, because the court right now, or the camera is right behind the center mark, if we could be looking at you directly from behind you, we would actually see the racket to the left of your hand, where Felix has the racket to the right of his hand. Again, this is not something you do on purpose, but this is just a natural movement that occurs when you drive up with the rack, with the elbow properly. Now, why do I want your toss more to the right? Because that's where your racket's going. So one of the things that can actually keep people from driving their elbow up, and this might be what's happening for you, is when the toss is too far left, the player doesn't want their racket to go over here and then have to find the ball, especially if they're, if they're not predisposed to doing that. And so what ends up happening is your toss being so far to the left actually forces you to not want to keep your hand going back and driving your elbow up because that would throw the racket way off to the right. And then you're like, wait, how am I going to get back over to the ball? You have a bit of a shot put uh, service motion. It's almost like you're in track and field, right? The track and field event shot put. You're kind of pushing. In fact, I heard a coach recently called it a power, a, um, a power push is actually what it was called. And I thought that was a great name. You're kind of pushing your serve rather than allowing your hand to go back the way baby Tsitsipas the way, or Aiden, the way that Felix did here. And now he can really drive the elbow up, but we just never see your elbow higher than your hand. So I don't know if this is a, a flexibility thing, but I would really work on allowing your hand to go back as the racket goes back so you can drive that elbow up. Just toss a little bit lower and a little more to the right. Now, one last thing that you're going to want to make sure of. It, well, in fact, I'll show you two more things. The first thing is pronation. You are not pronating on your serve. After you hit the ball, look at your serve here. Um, in fact, is this, a, is this your first serve? Wait, let me see here. Yeah, this is a first serve. I want you to look at your serve and look after contact how your strings right there are pointing left. You do not want your strings after hitting the ball to be pointing left. Look at Felix. You have to point your strings to the right. In fact, his strings are facing up to the right. That movement is the fastest way to move the racket. Now, I'm going to show you Ben Shelton and what he does to actually facilitate this pronation. And this is a right-handed right -handed Ben Shelton, so you can see this. I want you to look at this position right here. Uh, yeah, this position right here. Notice how his elbow is bent. This is one of the easiest ways, and his elbow is bent but pointing up. This is one of the easiest ways to make sure that you pronate. After you hit the ball, bend your elbow. You can see his strings are facing the camera right now. We can see his palm. 
which means he has pronated his strings after contact. And the strings are actually like right here. His strings are facing up over the cameraman's head. But the strings are facing off to his right. Again, I, I reversed the video. You can see that the words in the writing is written backward on the, on the background there. Um, so right-handed Ben Shelton. But you can see that tremendous elbow bend. This is like the Sampras elbow. This is how he would serve and, and have all that tremendous pronation after contact. I would recommend working on this to really make sure that all of that racket speed that you created during the motion snaps into contact with a forearm snap. And the pronation is the easiest way to make that happen. And the easiest way to pronate is just to make sure that you bend the elbow after contact. Now, the last thing, Winston, I want to show you is your finish. Every time you finish on your serve, you always have your left hand reaching behind you. So whether it's a first serve, here's a second serve. You can see that left hand. Watch this next one here. Watch your left hand go behind you. I don't want you to finish with your left hand out like this. I know a lot of coaches talk about, oh, you need it out there for balance. You don't need it out there for balance, especially if you're not tossing so far left that you fall off balance. What's more important is to tuck that arm in to stop the body's rotation. You want to stop your body's rotation as you're hitting in order to hit faster serves. Let me show you uh, Nadal, but I'm also going to show you JJ Wolf. Now, this video is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. So here is a right-handed Nadal. I've just reversed the video. That's actually a left-handed Alcaraz on the other side of the court, said Indian Wells. I want you to look at contact where the left hand is, how it's visible to the camera. I want you to look at his finish. By the way, he's got the elbow bend. He, el he bends the elbow to be able to pronate. But I want you to look at the finish. The racket is on the left side of his body, and we still see the left hand visible on the right side of the body. I call this wave to the camera behind you. Now, why does he do this? It is so that his body is not rotating as he hits the ball. You do not want your body rotating as you hit the ball. You want to rotate to contact, and you can see that here. Here we can see the Nike swoosh on his chest, but then as he hits the ball, we don't see that Nike swoosh because he's rotating, right? His body's going up, and it's rotating like a corkscrew. But check out his body rotation, or I'm going to say lack thereof, during contact. Winston, I want you to pay close attention to this area of Nadal's body, right? So like from his knees to his ribs. If we zoom in, watch as he's hitting the ball, he has no body rotation. Look at this. His, like his body right now is facing the net post. His body is facing the net post. But look, his body is still facing the net post. His hips have not moved. So from here, 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 he is not rotating the body. Why is this important? It's a reactive break. When you stop the body's rotation, the arm is going to accelerate. We all, everyone knows about the kinetic chain. Everyone hears the kinetic chain. You got to get the body to, you know, transfer energy from the ground up to the arm and to the racket. How do you do that? You do it by stopping something in order for it to accelerate and, and the energy parlays into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And so all of a sudden it all culminates into the contact. What I want you to do for every serve you hit is to finish with your arms crossed in front of you. It is called a power X. It is going to stop your body's rotation and all of that energy that you created that we've in all the ways we've talked about, you are going to serve so much faster because the only thing that's rotating, I'm sorry, the only thing that is moving is your hitting arm, allowing you to pronate super fast and you, your body is not wasting its energy on your body rotating. Here's a great view of JJ Wolf. And I want you to look at his finish. I want you to finish with your arms crossed like an X. Um, he is right now basically waving to someone behind you, uh, behind him. He is waving. Like I like to tell people, as you're hitting the ball, your left hand should smell like your right armpit. So you can see why. He's got the same elbow bend, the same pronation. But look, his body is facing the camera. 
if he was still rotating, he would end up facing that guy. You can see that his chest is pointing back and now his chest is facing, you know, kind of the net post, but watch how his chest stops rotating. He's rotating to contact, but now he's no longer rotating. The reason for that is when you stop the body's rotation, the arm accelerates. Use these tips and your serve is going to improve, Winston, dramatically. If you want to learn the exact same strategies that the pros are using to help them win more matches, then check out the Singles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Over 50 pages of strategy after strategy, all based on the style of opponent you play against. Simply put your phone or tablet up over the QR code, and up pops a short video from Will Hamilton over at Fuzzy Yellow Balls showing you how to use each strategy. To get it, simply use my link. It's in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, maybe you want to find a local league at your level, or you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Player Court, and it's playercourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. Winston, work on these serve tips, and there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. Winston, you got this.